Welcome to the future where the glass is half full and you'll need new glasses, where you'll be jumping from conclusions. The past is a no, and a new future is born. Never before in history has so much meant so little to so many. A.D. on the radio. So... Funkhauser, I, I guess the big news in the world of Donald Trump's White House is that Steve Bannon has left the building. Oh, wait. Sorry. Hold on. Steve Bannon has alt left the building. <laughs> Don't worry. Though. He's still got his job being the head cheese in charge over at Breitbart. He'll be alt right. <laughs> uh, he had my favorite uh, dog and pony trick. Oh, well, you know, the thing that he could do, they say. Oh, that. Now we'll never know. This, this shows how crazy the last couple of months in the world of politics have been. I had forgotten that the Mooch mm -hmm. had said that Bannon was capable of doing something to himself that only Ron Jeremy was capable of doing to himself. That it's Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, I tell you what, if he really can do that. He doesn't have to waste his time with Breitbart. Just, doing going to America's got, just going straight to America's Got Talent. Yeah, what are you doing behind a computer screen? Oh, wait. Don't answer that. You know what I think this is? You know what I think this is? I think this is... Survivor presidential version? Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? It, it is, uh, you know, it's not unlike The Celebrity Apprentice. Like, everyone's been fired. But I think Bannon, Bannon was going to exit gracefully and then... He did and said all the wrong things in the wake of Charlottesville and um, John F. Ke Kelly, White House chief of staff, went, no, 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 you're gone. You are so, you're so gone. You're so gone. Because if you recall, what happened was Donald Trump was, and quite rightly so, absolutely taken to task for being soft on neo-Nazis. It was very clearly established. Nazis are bad. You shouldn't be an apologist for them. You're too busy trying to maintain the support of anybody that you can get the support of. You just don't like the idea that anybody doesn't just absolutely freaking love you. So like the, the neo-Nazi types were like we were saying, Donald Trump's back alley side action. Like he rated them a three at best, but you know, he wasn't uh, he wasn't opposed to having them pull his lever of democracy, but only when Sounds the dirty. Slovakian Cinderella was sleeping with Prince Valiant Valium did uh, he bother sort of paying any attention to his side action when he saw his side action, the neo-Nazi types in the street. He disavowed. OK, you know, who's that person? Boy, that's strange. Yeah, certainly don't need their vote. Please vote for me. So he came out super soft on neo-Nazism, which was obviously the wrong thing to do when faced with the ability to confront a great and up close and personal evil and evil that has murdered someone that day. You don't go, I'm going to wait till I got all the facts and then say there's been violence on all sides. No, you go after them hard. And Trump failed to do that because he was trying to tacitly maintain their support, which was in every way, shape or form. The wrong thing to do. Despicable, spineless, awful, terrible thing to do. And then Bannon uh, did a couple of interviews and he was like, ha ha ha. Did you see how I eased the pressure on the president with my brilliant words to the press? And Kelly went, I don't I, no, This will not be a thing. Bannon out. Same way the mooch was out, which, um, <laughs> I guess leaves things open for an incredible new buddy sitcom, Bannon and the Mooch. I'm very much looking forward to this. But you know what I realized, Funkhauser? I think this means that. Yeah, I think this means that. <laughs> it's very good. I think this means that with, with Bannon gone, that's the last piece of Trump's inner circle probably or the last large piece of Trump's inner circle that was really just all about Trump TV like there was this idea that Donald Trump didn't really want to be president that he just announced that he was going to take a run at being president because ratings for The Apprentice were falling into the toilet and this happens every sort of like year Donald Trump's ratings go in the toilet he talks about his political aspirations he asks for Obama's birth certificate and all of a sudden, The Apprentice is back up on top because he's the name on everybody's lips and people are talking about him. 
And this time he actually won, which was not intentional with what the intention was. A lot of people seem to think was to launch Trump TV. That's why he enlisted the help of Roger Ailes. That's why he enlisted the help of Steve Bannon. Bannon ran Breitbart, this massive, massive, massive right wing political website slash blog, whatever you want to call it. And he also had Roger Ailes, the ousted head of Fox in his corner. And this wasn't because he wanted to take a real run of being president of these United States of America and leader of the free world. No, this was because he was looking to launch a new media empire, Trump TV. And it was funny. I talked to some very in the know media types about this and he was like, uh, or, I, or they were like, yeah, that Trump TV thing. That is what we're bet your bottom dollar. Trump TV is going to happen. And then that plan got derailed for a moment because he became president. Much to everyone's surprise, Donald Trump got elected. Now, I'm not downplaying the seriousness of the whole thing, but based on what happened the first couple of times he announced he was going to be president, you could be forgiven for being going for you could be forgiven for thinking the whole thing was a big joke. But it did derail his plans for Trump TV. And now that Kelly has gotten rid of Bannon, that's it for the Trump TV element of his White House. And now, now, much to his chagrin, he has to go and actually be president. Thanks to Kelly. Real radio, 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 radio. 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 104.1. Where the left and right come together for fundamental truths. AD on the radio, on Twitter at ADSXE. So yeah, Bannon's out. The Trump presidency that we fought for and won is over. That's what Bannon said. He said, we still have a huge movement and we will make something of this Trump presidency, but that presidency is over with me not being a part of it. It'll be something else. It'll be all kinds of fights. So there's going to be good days and bad days, but that presidency is over. Throw now, shade. what he means by, wow. yeah, no, no, he was very quick to throw the shade the moment he was released, relieved of his duties. He's now back in charge over at Breitbart, but it's an interesting one. Like I said before, Donald Trump, there are many sort of like media types, high up media types that I've spoken to about this that have uh, concurred with my suspicions that Donald Trump was not so much into the idea of being a president. He wanted to bolster ratings for his TV show, which wasn't doing so hot. And he'd done this like it, it had worked for him. It had been tried and true year after year. Whenever The Apprentice was looking like it was falling off, he would rant and rave about politics. He would announce that he was going to take a run at being president. He would do something along those lines, and then everybody would be talking about Trump, and then Bazinga, the ratings for The Apprentice, would be back up in the game. This time, the thing that got in the way was the fact that he won the election. He had to make a real go of it. And... The idea that he was still trying to ride this thing into Trump TV was still very much alive. When asked about it, Bannon was like, hey, Trump's a businessman. That's all he would say. Is Trump TV going to be a thing? Is this all just a prelude to his own television network? And Bannon would say something along the lines of, hey, he's a businessman. He wouldn't deny it. And that's basically him going, yeah, Trump TV totally will be a thing. It was Bannon, by the way. Who helped him win, I think. I think he really, really helped Donald Trump win because he knew, being the media mogul that he is, how to manipulate the media, how to manipulate people's minds with headlines. And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you why. We've done this before on the show, but Funkhauser, super quick. Mm -hmm. When I say Ted Cruz, what, what do you think? Oh, of? that's Lion Ted there. Poor oh, guy. Yeah. When I say when I say Hillary Clinton, what do you think? Oh, crooked Hillary. Somebody straighten oh, her out. Yeah. What what uh, what about Marco Rubio? You remember? Oh man, was he short? I can't remember. It, it, close. It was little Marco. Ah, oh, little Marco. Yeah, and these are immediate knee jerk reactions that you have. You don't know if Ted Cruz lied. You don't know if you know. Well, I mean, like you know, you know that Marco is not the biggest dude in the world, but immediately. Because he 
put this negative adjective in front of their names. Uh, <laughs> all of a sudden, this is what pops into your mind. Knee jerk reaction. What Marco Rubio Funkhauser? Little Marco. Aw. See? Yeah. It's like that whole sort of like that conditioning with advertising. What is Coke, Funkhauser? Coke is uh, refreshing. No, Coke is it. Oh. Boy. <laughs> Maybe you are oblivious to the advertising campaigns. Yeah, I don't Winston look at that tastes good mm-hmm. like a. Mm-mm. This is an old school one because you can't really do that kind of cowboy advertising anymore. The Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. I mm. think that was the slogan back in the day. All these catchy little advertising slogans, and they don't really do that anymore. What What is Mentos? The Fresh Maker. That's See, a good one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in the right age group. So, like, it was <laughs> Bannon that said, "Hey, you just put a negative, you, you put a negative adjective in front of their names, and people are automatically going to think that they're going to think Lion Ted Cruz, Crooked Hillary, Little Marco Rubio." And that was, make no mistake about it, a large part of the way small minds were (laughs) manipulated to pull the lever of democracy for Donald Trump. And Bannon's good at that stuff. He's really, really good at that stuff. You can call him what you want. You can say what you will about him. But bottom line is he he knows how to press the buttons and he did it very effectively for Trump. And now he's quickly gone on the offensive. He's been out of the White House for almost no time whatsoever. He's like, yeah, the Trump presidency that we fought for is done. You might see see things happen. There's going to be good days and bad days. But since I'm no longer a part of it, everything that you liked about it is effectively over. This is what we fought for. This is now no longer what you're getting. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. And uh, we'll wait and see how it all plays out. But. I'm going to go on a limb, go out on a limb and guess that you have not heard the last of Steve Bannon and you have not heard the last. And gosh, now that he's not actually in a position where he can do any real, real damage, I really am looking forward to seeing and hearing more from the Mooch because like that was a little piece of comic relief like Anthony Scaramucci. (laughs) It was scary when he was in an actual position of power, when he was a White House communications director for about Well, it was 10 days. That is now a unit of measurement of time. How many Scaramucci's until we go away on vacation, Funkhauser? I really want to go away Mm. on vacation. 12. Um, Not with you, per se. I mean, I I love you. I love doing this show with you. But when I go on vacation, I have zero interest. Don't take me with there. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I'll tell you about it. Me going on vacation is vacation for you, too. Uh (laughs) But... Yeah, uh, 10 days has become a unit of time measured as a Scaramucci. And now that he's out, I really hope we hear more from him because, like I said, wildly really entertaining do? guy to have around. Yeah, I do. I do because he's just so utterly he's like ridiculous. became an just, analyst on Fox News. That'd be OK. Oh, just all day. I mean, uh, I, you know, yeah, because then I could switch him off and know he wasn't intrinsically tied to how our country was going to wind up, you know. I think that would be, yeah. I, I, see, that's what I want. I want Bannon and, the, Bannon and the Mooch to be a buddy sitcom that I can switch off when I'm tired of it. And as long as they're not involved in effing up the country, I can take them in small doses for the comedic value. Money making, money, money making, skills on the mic can be played every day. And they're kind of the battles about time for the act, you know. Whoa, come on, come on, come on, come on. For more stimulation and less irritation, 9 out of 10 doctors choose KPRC AM 950. Houston's more stimulating talk radio. Don't get the blues, get all the news. We mean all of you. Guys out there in Radio Land. All aboard! He's back. AD on the radio. Give it up, yeah. Give it up, yeah. Bring this on, bring this on. Come on, come on. So you know how we were talking about this on the show the other day, Funkhauser, how this one guy, 26-year-old man who had uh, longer hair on top, shaved at the side, was stabbed while he was getting out of his car to go buy a delicious milkshake by someone who was saying that he was a neo-Nazi. He was in no way, shape, or form a neo-Nazi. He had no neo-Nazi tattoos or clothing or anything that would lead him to Made you rethink your believe. haircut, though. Yeah, made me rethink my haircut. And like this guy said, are you one of those neo-Nazi people? 
and then stabbed him. He's got this massive gash in his hand. And the only evidence that he might have been in any way, shape or form a neo-Nazi was his haircut, which was shaved at the sides. And he's like, I'm not a neo-Nazi. I just like that haircut. And it's a very popular haircut. When I got my haircut a little while ago, literally everyone at Floyd's 99 Barber was getting that haircut long on top. They give you the card where you have to uh, punch five holes in it and you get the sixth haircut free. No, they did that to me. Card there was there is down here. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger chain down here, I think. I I guess so. I don't know. Anyways, I was thinking like now people are getting stabbed for having short sides. (laughs) Maybe I'd let it grow a little bit, and then I realize if I let it grow, I wind up with a Bannon. Like Steve Bannon has a very specific haircut too. Is just like I'm just gonna have to like hide until my hair gets long enough to not like like. uh, a head shape that is just like no one I've ever seen. It's like a square. Steve Bannon? Yeah. I don't, I'm looking at pictures now. Like, You'd have to I, try I really to, hard to get that haircut. I mean... I, I hate to say it, but Steve Bannon's got, you know, for the most part, a pretty good haircut. I'm not saying... I, I don't agree with his Well, politics, he's got that going think, for him. There's one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. There, there you go. Uh, another reason why Bannon and the Mooch would be an excellent buddy sitcom. You'd get to see, like, Steve Bannon's windswept riding with the top-down locks that are just fall across his forehead just so right next to Anthony Scaramucci's hilarious hair helmet. That thing must have like if <laughs> that little cowlick he had at the front, I bet you could have put something like a coin on it and it wouldn't have fallen <laughs> a through. <coin. laughs> a quarter yeah. or a dime. Well, I say this to you talking? because you remember, do you remember when we were in like the, the sixth and eighth grade Funkhauser, mm-hmm. like girls did that thing with their bangs where they like hairsprayed them out. Do you remember that? Do, do you remember mm. seeing that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, like I like one of my very first girlfriends had that and I put a 50 cent piece on her hair and it didn't fall through. I was like, you use too much hairspray. (laughs) And uh, oh, man, that was the end of your relationship. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and she broke up oh. with me. I was like, I guess I'll have to wait another couple of years to feel a boob. (laughs) But it was worth the laugh while it happened. But yeah, no, I think Bannon, uh, like uh, the Mooch has one of the, just like, it's this incredible lacquered creation, like between Trump, Mooch and Bannon, there's some, there's some interesting, uh, interesting follicle arrangements that have been going on in the White House over the last hundred or There's a better word than interesting. They're abhorrent. No, I I think it's interesting. Different. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know if it is abnormal. You know, they all have people. They have a crew of, like, makeup and uh, hair people following them around with stuff. Yeah, but ultimately it's their decision. It's what they wind up doing. Their people present them with haircut A, B, and C, and they go, I want B. I want the hair helmet. I want the – and I I was thinking about this the other day. You know, like, people talk about Donald Trump's hair being, like, an easy target – but I just, I was looking at, I saw some picture of it close up the other day and I was like, what? Did I, I give him one thing, whatever sort of arrangement he's got going on and whatever the reasons for that arrangement, I think it's unique because I'm hard pressed to think of anybody that has a Trump haircut. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you think of any, what like, are we doing here? Donald What's Trump? going on today? I, well, I think <laughs> of Donald Trump's haircut. Can you think of anyone on the face of planet earth? That has. Oh, I'll have to get back to you on that. There are a lot of people. The answer is no. The answer. The answer uh, is no. Danny Bonaduce. Danny Bonaduce. I don't. Partridge Family Guy. Yeah, I I think it, closely related. Danny Just to be Bonaduce. devil's advocate, Danny Bonaduce. To I'm Google at his hair now. It's nothing like Trump's. In fact, I'm uh, even going to go to Danny Bonaduce's way. website. Danny Bonaducci.net. You sure you want to do that? Yeah, I'm just, you know, checking out his hair. It doesn't look anything at all like Trump's. I mean, it's a similar color, I think. I think if Danny Bonaducci were 70 something, it would be thinner and grayer. So it would lighten up. I think, uh, you know, not you current think day. Bonaduce's Bonaduce. on his way. You know, you know, it's interesting because I, I like this uh, theory that you have that Danny Bonaducci is on his way to being Donald Trump. I got to tell you, I don't go to Danny Bonaduce's website all that much, but I did now just to look at a picture and see what the hell you're talking about. I do not agree on the hair thing. However, however, you know what it says? 
on the welcome Uh-oh. page of Danny Bonaduce, da- uh-huh. Danny Bonaduce's website says no fake news. <laughs> Kid you not. Oh, oh gosh. These are interesting times we're living in Funkhauser. Let's go back to talking yeah. about their hair though. No, no more hair. It's the talk. best news you can say. Yeah. Um, right. Hey, what, what, what's your friend trying to sell tickets to? Oh, you're talking about the picture I sent you? Oh, he's, he bought a cruise for his, uh, his uh, lady friend, and uh, he can't go now because he has to work, and it's like a swinger. Oh, is it, oh what? Uh, can I say that on this? Yeah, uh, yeah. You, it's, I it's mean, a, as long as it's cool with your friend. You know, people, people uh, don't wear clothes, and they go on a cruise ship for four or five days. And uh, things happen huh? on it, and you can buy tickets. And he bought your them. friend was going on a swingers cruise. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just still uh, traumatized because I I crashed at his house this weekend, Saturday night, and uh, uh, I heard some things happening in the house that with his uh, with his significant <laughs> other that. Uh, <laughs> Kind of rattled me. How far? How far apart? Are, how far apart were the rooms you're staying in? It's like a three story thing, but uh, you know his mom's staying with him, so the well, room is filled up. So okay, oh, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. just. Are you visualizing so, this? It's not. You try not to. Try not there's to, a hallway to, that goes into the I'm bedroom. I'm trying to get the schematics without picturing the visuals. Like a spiral Wait, staircase they were doing going it in up. the hallway next to the room you're staying in. Yeah, I was in the, like the bottom and room. Well, ho, 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 and hold on. It just got very. You know, Funkhauser. I should have never sent you this picture. You know, well, I mean, it's not a picture. You, you, like, it's a. Flyer I don't know if you knew cruise. anybody that could take the tickets. No, I don't know anybody that's going on a swingers cruise or would be interested in it as well. Hey, we know none of Christian Jean's hand, and it's uh, Burning Man is coming up. Maybe he'd be interested he, in this too. I don't think so. But hold on, if you first and foremost, um, if you. Own a home. I'm sure you have lots of questions. It's your place. No, no. Think about this for a second, Funkhauser. Because like, can open worms everywhere. Let's say you use you, a different analogy, please. In this case, <laughs> <laughs> let's say you and your significant other are having a friend over. Okay. Do you you know abstain from doing the nasty until they're gone? Because I sure as hell would. Now let's for a moment say that you and your significant other are having your mom over <laughs> do you abstain from doing the nasty while the mother two is valid questions but i'll rebut with this i have a lot of friends that are different types of people so a lot it's, of them are i'm not asking about no 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 no, no, no. I'm, I'm not asking about them funk house. would I'm i asking about you ne- yeah what do you think no hell to the no is the not, answer no you don't, not in blue no. blazes not in blue blazes. When your mom's coming over, you you abstain for the night that the mom's staying over. When your friend's coming over, you abstain for the night that your friend's coming over. You being the friend and the mom being the mom. I mean, were both that's situational, over, though. I mean, anything could happen. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> stop making excuses okay, for that. Fine. I'm not Keep saying going. there's anything wrong with their behavior, but I'm saying it was a calculated attempt to get you to join in. They did this in the hallway outside mm. of your bedroom. Oh. When swingers do that, and it sounds like they're swingers because they're trying to unload a couple of tickets to a swingers cruise. When swingers have sex outside of your room. They are. They're. They're not trying to keep it quiet. They're not trying to keep it private. They're hoping you'll go. Hey, what's all the ruckus? Mind if I join in? You think That's so? What, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I made yeah. it clear often, long ago that that would not occur. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So maybe they just feel like they can. Mm-hmm, they know that. Mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. I really don't know, and I'm still mm-hmm. traumatized by the mm-hmm. whole experience. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I uh I once hosted a radio thing mm-hmm. and it was at this bar in Houston, Texas, not far from the water, like the south side of town. And in the next room, there are a bunch of sort of men and women, mostly in their 50s, I think, whooping it up, having an amazing time. And they are dancing and they are drinking and they are all playing grab ass with each other. And they are just an awfully jolly bunch. And one of the women approaches me and says like, you want to come in and join our party? I was like, 
uh, I'm, I'm working right now. I'm actually busy promoting another. Uh, is this the event. time you were like a model for something? Shut I had up. that haircut. I'm just wondering, trying to place uh, it. No, no, it's not not that time. That was one time. I walked on one runway. I made a thousand dollars for about thirty seconds worth of work, and that so was like I could call you a model. No, no, you can't. That was many, 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 many donuts ago. <laughs> that's not it's just a plus size so model now. It's fine. <laughs> Deal with it. You can accept it. No, see, I'm not even plus size. Like, if I were to actually try and get that kind of work, I'm not like, I'm not. I haven't eaten enough donuts to where I could get work as a plus size model, but too much donuts to get work as like somebody that walks down a runway in a bathing suit next to a woman in a bathing suit. That's that those. Yeah, that's a, that's what you would model. I'm trying suit? to make a. I'm I'm trying. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to trying to make a point here. I'm trying to make a Continue. point here. And this was, I was like, no, I can't come and ho- be part of your party. I'm hosting this party. It wouldn't look good if these people paid me to be on the mic and do what a broadcaster does in this situation. And then, you know, during the breaks, I was nipping off to your party. Plus your party looks interesting, but not like the kind of party I would like to attend. And she's like, it's a couple's party. I was like, well, I'm here by myself. And she was like, we could find someone for you to be a couple with. And I was like, what kind of party exactly are you having? And she was like, it's a lifestyle party, a couple's lifestyle party. I was like, so you're swingers? And she was like, we don't really like that word. I was like, but that's the word that could be assigned I think, to her. Um, and she's like, why don't you just come and see for yourself before you judge? They invited you and to I, be like, a unicorn I, I, at that point. Anyways, I, uh, I, 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 I told this woman multiple times no. And to my point, you might have told your host and his girlfriend multiple times no. But no... <laughs> Doesn't seem to mean no to these people when they get up and running, if you know what I mean. <laughs> up and, and running. You do. <laughs> no means maybe? Uh, let's do some news. Thank you. Gosh. Uh, Christina Aguilera and Pink have ended their 16-year feud. Really? I wasn't aware they had a 16-year feud. Do you think they feuded during that one song? Real Lady Marmalade soundtrack that we re- yeah. It's all my soul, <laughs> sisters. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Why would they fight? I don't know, but I, I think that song came out about sixteen years ago. Maybe over uh, royalties or something. Who knows? You know, you never know. I do know this though. Until they prove it by having a public makeout section session, I don't know if I'll believe that they've settled their beef. So hmm. there's, there's that. Is that still okay? Mm. I think. What, what do you mean? Is that still okay? Just Them current day, out? Christina and Pink. I think you. I, I think it's what, borderline. I don't know what current day Pink looks like. Yeah. Current day Christina seems to be of the yo-yoing variety. But here's the thing: I always think it's unfair. Like women have this distinct advantage. Women, although the dad bod has come back in vogue. As we've said numerous times on the show, I am a big fan of Drew Barrymore. And one thing that I noticed early on about Drew Barrymore is that when she's this little pixie wafy version of Drew Barrymore, super hot. When she's a little more voluptuous, a la uh, the scene where she's in the all-in-one racing outfit in the Charlie's Angel movie, equally a Charlie's Angels movie, equally as hot. And I think Christina Aguilera has that going for her. Even if it's like where she's yo-yoed up or yo-yoed down in weight, still attractive. AD on the radio. So the tiny tots are on their way back to the world of education. Now, what do you think, Bunkhauser, is the most stressful thing for a parent that has a kid going back to school? Uh, alarm clock. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, because we tackle big and important issues. Am I right? Am show. I wrong? You're not going to tell me. Uh, We'll get to it later on. Right now, though, let's take a look at the events of today in our segment, My Witness News. What else is going on in the world? Uh, Robin Thicke's 22-year-old girlfriend is pregnant. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I I think uh, 
How old is Robin Thick now? Um, I was gonna ask I Siri. That but, uh, old. I don't think. I, I think. I that how old is Robin? Uh, he, he is. is uh, his he's age 40. is. F- yeah, he's, he's forty. 40. And his girlfriend and is 20. Okay, 18. 20. Yeah, that's... It's not, like, unbelievably creepy, but it's still creepy. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. 20 years younger. Yeah, the more I think do about it, Do you remember the, the year 2000? I do. His girlfriend wouldn't. She would have been born. She would have... Uh, or one. 22. Yeah, she would, she, she would have no idea what the whole big kerfuffle over Y2K was. <laughs> And it just got gross. <laughs> I just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. I, I don't know. I, like, I think about me at age 22. I mean, age is just a number if you connect with somebody, but that's a gap. I, I, I think I, you know, and, and this is possibly a little judgmental on my part. Look, I'm talking about how not hooking up with a 22-year-old is judgmental on my part. <laughs> 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 I just think of me at age 22 and think I was an idiot that didn't know anything about anything. And more importantly, I didn't know anything about who I was or what I wanted to be or what was important to me. And when you don't know those things, it's a little. Yeah, Look, if like, you're in a relationship, even if there's no age gap whatsoever, Funkhauser, okay. say 36 year old Funkhauser meets 36 year old girl and you fall in love and want to be with them. But if you don't know who you are, and what you want out of life and how you want to be treated and the things in the world. If you don't know what it's going to take to make you happy, it's unfair of you almost to ask that girl to share a life with you because you're basically coming with no owner's manual. You haven't figured it out yet. And that's an unfair position to put a potential spouse in or a life partner or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and but everybody's road is different. Like, what if they're... You're right. No, no, you're you're absolutely right. Everybody's road is different. And maybe there is a really dialed in on it 22-year-old out there that really knows everything about everything. And it would make perfect sense for them to be with a 40-year-old person who is maybe perhaps wildly immature to where they're both about a mental age of 30 or something and it makes sense. But I just have a hard time knowing what I was like at age 22, imagining that a relationship with a 22 year old would be in any way, shape or form real. But yeah, Robin Thicke's 22 year old girlfriend is, is knocked up with child up the duff pregnant. <laughs> in other words, up the duff. Ooh, new up expression. The duff. That's an, e- yeah, that's an English. Can you, are you sure English you we can say that? Thing. Yeah. Got her up the duff, didn't I? Oh, tin roof rusted. I know that <laughs> similar. She's up the duff, mate. I'm no Jaffa. Do you know what that means? <laughs> What's a I'm Jaffa? no Jaffa. No. A Jaffa? Oh, you it's told me orange. a long time ago, yeah. Yeah, a Jaffa orange is an orange that's seedless. So, like, <laughs> if, you're, if, if you're incapable of it's impregnating someone, you get the nickname Jaffa. Like, I remember a friend of mine in England was trying to impregnate his wife, and uh, they worked out <laughs> that it happened on the first attempt. Like, they went away, like, had a little vacation. We're going to try and conceive now. It's going to be a lovely experience. This will be our first time. First of many, I'm sure. And, oh, wow, I've missed my period. It worked first time. And, like, he, he was like... Lucky he was like, me. The, he was like, I'm not a Jaffa, mate. This is, this is freaking great. I'm not a Jaffa. I was like, what, what do you mean, not a Jaffa? He's like, you know, seedless orange. I was like, there you go. So, yeah, Robin Thicke, not a Jaffa. <laughs> And interestingly enough, the uh, the baby's going to be the first thing Robin Thicke has produced that isn't a ripoff of Marvin Gaye. <laughs> Go on. Hold on, I'm writing down Robin Thicke, not a Jaffa. Because that's uh, <laughs> something I want to remember. Uh, Six you, yeah. Flags is getting a Wonder Woman coaster. <laughs> yeah? Oh. Yeah. Do you go to Six Flags? Mm-hmm. Are oh, you try I, I uh, did when I was 22. Are you going to go to my forty-year-old girlfriend? Um, <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I guess I don't really like roller coasters. I'm uh, you know, uh, too many things could get hurt on me. Mm. Mm. Like to Uh-oh. not live dangerously. Allergies! Oh, freaking allergies! Oh my gosh! Tis the car season. Is co- there we oh go. my god! My car is coated in this like thick layer of yellow polleny crap mm. that I just like. 
Uh, every time I like, and, and doesn't matter how often I wash it, there it is again. And when I shut the door or open the door, like a cloud of the stuff shakes and then settles on me as I get in or get out. It is, it's that late summer, early fall allergy season starting early. The uh, the golden rod is strong with this season. Ugh, <laughs> that's the worst. But yeah, Six Flags getting a Wonder Woman coaster, which, eh. It'll probably be no better than other coasters, but you're going to rave about it so you don't look like a sexist. <laughs> Go on. Didn't she fly around in an invisible airplane? How are they going to equate that to a roller know. coaster? It's, mm. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I really want to see the Wonder Woman movie. That's yeah. another flick that I haven't gotten to. Like, Isn't it the number one it. grossing of all time? Superhero movie? Of I all don't time, know, but it's time? like, uh, yeah, on many sides, on many sides, of all time, of all time. Um it's supposed to be really, really freaking good. Like, I, I know this, my brother-in-law. Oh, I don't know if I should say yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, don't. It's good Anyways, because you have insiders sources. Insiders say it's mm-hmm. great, yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Someone whose opinion I trust on no this No bleep one, button. Whose no job way. is now definitely not in jeopardy, um, says it's really, really good. And that's the end of that story. Go on. Uh, Hamilton opened up in Los Angeles this week. Oh, what, the rapping president musical that uh, it's impossible to get tickets for? Is that, is that what you mean by Hamilton? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hmm. You know what that means? That means there's finally something in Los Angeles that costs more than a house. Hmm. <laughs> Who wrote that one? <laughs> oh, that was me. That was me after looking at home prices in Southern California. <laughs> and, hurts. you know, we've Painful. read all those articles about the fact that nobody in Los Angeles can afford a home. Like, I think... Point, it, it's a very, very small minority of the population of Los Angeles can actually afford to purchase a home in Los Angeles. It is the, and and for that reason, like rental costs are skyrocketing because nobody can afford to buy anything. Yep. So it's all yeah. gonna fall over. Maybe you'd Not be able bad. to buy, you know, maybe you'd be able to buy yourself a nice home if you weren't so busy spending every cent you made on those Hamilton tickets, Funkhauser. But it's such <laughs> a good thing. Uh, glitter is apparently bad for the environment. Oh. I know. Oh. Oh. When he heard this, like, even Leonardo DiCaprio was like, look, I'm all for the trees and the sea lions and the dolphins, but you keep your government hands off the strippers. Uh, it's okay, kids. Don't bother with the glitter. We'd rather have a Dave & Buster's gift certificate than one of those stupid homemade cards anyway. There, I said it. Go on. But ha- have you ever gotten a glitter bomb in the mail? No, I heard about those things. Because, like, glitter, I guess, doesn't come off. It, like, it's funny because, Would like, that bother you or would you laugh? I, don't, I think it would really bother me. Would I think get it, it would all bother my me because it would... Yeah, like, I, anything that causes... Like, I've got zero time in my freaking day. And anybody that eats up any of that through any kind of inconvenience willful or not is instantly on my s list so so you're saying better you know, than hate mail then that's what you're saying to the over the air audience i would rather get hate mail than a glitter bomb yes you heard uh, it that, yeah you heard it listener if you yeah, hate the show lot, enough Funkhauser. another fine freaking pickle you've gotten me into just real classy let's get to the story uh the aclu has settled a lawsuit against psychologists who develop torture techniques for the cia Mm. And now they can move on to their next target in their anti-torture crusade. A studio executive who lit the dark tower. Ugh, not good. Go on. Uh, Researchers are close to transplanting uh, uh, pig organs into humans. I thought we'd already done that. Like pig hearts? I think like valves. Valves, right. Yeah. My uncle had one. It's supposed to last 10 years, and he didn't have it replaced, so... No kidding. He's no longer with us. You got to check but, yourself out there. But he had... How long ago was Ten this? 1980-something. Uh, oh, so Ten-year lifespan, back. and he's like, ah, get to it. But he actually had a pig valve in his heart? Mm-hmm. No kidding. That's fascinating, fascinating I think stuff. So. Long, yeah, a long time ago. I wonder if he felt like a cannibal when he was eating bacon. Or he felt stronger, like, more. Yeah. Or maybe he thought, I've already got a heart problem to where I needed a pig's heart valve put in there. Maybe I shouldn't eat the bacon in the first place. Nah. Mm. That's just crazy talk. Mm. If I can't eat bacon, just, you know, uh, it's over. What's the point of anything? Mm-hmm. Sorry, pigs, but 
Yummy, yummy. What's that horrible Sam Kinison bit he had about, like, salt and sugar kicks your ass just getting the box already? Like, if you can't have salt, you can't have sugar. Just lay down and die, because what point is there in anything? And then he died in a car crash, mm-hmm. ironically. Unrelated to salt. Mm-hmm. Or bacon. Um, researchers are close to... Oh, I told you that. Uh, mm. Hope Hicks has been named the interim White House communications director. Hope Hicks. Nah, no, sorry. Sorry, Funkhauser. What the happened? Time it took to that, and the time it took to finish that sentence, she was fired. Hope Hicks. Mm. Hmm. Uh, President Trump bashed Amazon on Twitter yesterday. Uh-huh. Wow. Someone having problems getting their Propecia delivered to the White House on Amazon Prime? I don't know. I was promised drones. Isn't that, like, that Propecia stuff, right? What is that hair that stuff? supposed to be... Yeah, yeah, like it's a Rogaine or whatever. Mm. But what are they... Yeah, that's... It, it's supposed to, like, if you start to go bald, you use that stuff. Do you, do you, we're at the age where, like, people should have that happen, right? Well, it's supposed to be your hair comes from your... Uh, mother's father. So, did your mother's yeah, see, father? This is have not it? true. Oh, it's it an old wives' tale. No. I th- well, I don't know. Maybe it skips generations or something. But like, my grandfather on my mom's side, um, like when I was a kid, I had long hair. Like I've had this long might be hair bad like, news. most of my life. But I, I had long hair like down to my waist when I was like twelve, thirteen, fourteen years old. I don't know where where I got it in my head that I wanted hair that long, but I did. And everybody on my mom's side of the family said to me, like, enjoy it while you can, because, you know, you've inherited your grandfather's, uh, your grandfather, your maternal grandfather decides when you're going to lose your hair. And he went bald at uh, 19 or something or 18. And I asked him, I was like, is this true? And he was like, by the time I was like 19 or 20, I had a lot more of my face to wash. Let's just put it that way. And I was like, oh, no. And then I got to 19, 20 and, and beyond and realized that I either that wasn't true or I dodged that genetic bullet. So, yeah, not so much. We'll see. We'll see. That's well, developing. No, I mean, like, I don't know. I think I have like my uncle's hair because it like it looks exactly like his and he's like 65 and still has all of it. It's gray, though, but he still has all of it. We'll wait and see. Silver Fox. Mm-hmm. I look forward to being one of those. That's a weird way to end this show.